Holly Model 4150 mechanical secondary carburetors are easily identified by these features. Dual feed center hung float bowls, a primary metering block, and a secondary metering block. There is one accelerator pump located on each fuel bowl. Dual pumps indicate the famous Holly double pumper and can be easily spotted by noticing two accelerator pump arms on the base plate. 4150s are designed to fit to a square bore intake bolt pattern, but you can also use an adapter to bolt to spread bore intakes. There's a lot more to a 4150 mechanical secondary carburetor. Come in for a closer look inside. Let's start with the throttle body. This component is also referred to as the base plate and might have a few vacuum port configurations. Most Holley carburetors generally have at least one large port that's intended for drawing in crankcase fumes from a PCV valve and one other smaller port that's meant for hooking up an accessory that might require full vacuum. If your base plate has two larger ports, one's meant for PCV and the other could be used for connecting to a power brake booster. Keep any unused ports plugged with a cap to eliminate any vacuum leaks. On the base plate of a 4150 mechanical secondary, you'll notice an arm that'll operate the accelerator pump of the front fuel bolt. Diagonally opposite, you'll see an identical arm positioned to do the same to the accelerator pump of the rear bolt. The presence of two accelerator pump arms will signify a double pumper setup. The throttle plate assembly also has a curb idle adjuster screw on the driver's side which sets the idle speed of the engine by opening and closing the primary throttle plates and allowing more air to enter the engine. On the passenger side, you'll find the fast idle cam adjustment screw for models with electric chokes. The main body of the 4150 will have a choke horn and choke plate that control the airflow amount during engine warm-up. Under the choke plate, you'll find the two primary Venturi bores and boosters. You'll also find an accelerator pump discharge nozzle that's also sometimes called a squirter. On a mechanical secondary 4150 model, the rear area of the main body also has a discharge nozzle for the secondary Venturis. The volume and duration of fuel flow through both squirters can be customized with accessory kits. Holly offers different size discharge nozzles for the body and you can switch to one of many different accelerator pump cam choices. These cams for the front and rear accelerator pumps are changed out on the throttle plate assembly to further tune the system. Back on the body, the front and rear Venturis have four small holes that are the air bleeds for the primary idle and main fuel metering systems. The outer two are for the idle circuit and the inner two are for the main circuit. These holes should always be kept free of debris and can be flushed out with carburetor cleaner as maintenance. Like all Holly carburetors, the 4150 has a primary metering block that will have two primary jets to control normal fuel flow and a power valve that will act as an auxiliary fuel supply during acceleration. Idle mixture is set by adjusting the idle mixture screws located on each side of the metering block. On a model 4150, just above the passenger side idle mixture screw, you'll find a small vacuum port. This is called the timed or spark advance vacuum port. At idle, this port will show little or no vacuum to keep the distributor from advancing prematurely. If you have a mechanical advance distributor, you'll need to plug up this port. All 4150 mechanical secondary carburetors come with dual feed center hung float bowls. Inside a dual feed bowl, there's a float that's fixed in place with a center mounting hinge that will press on a needle and seat assembly that's positioned above. The float and seat work together to control the fuel level in each fuel bowl. On top of the bowl, for most models, you'll find an adjusting nut that will control the level of fuel inside the bowl. On this model carburetor, on the bottom exterior of both the primary and secondary fuel bowls, you'll find an accelerator pump. The accelerator pump arms are affixed to the base plate and press against the diaphragm inside the accelerator pump. On a mechanical secondary model, you'll find one on the rear as well. Dual accelerator pumps are the defining feature of a Holley 4150 double pumper carburetor. These pumps are activated every time the throttle is pressed and will send fuel immediately to the primary and secondary squirters in the body. 4150 model carburetors also have a secondary metering block. With mechanical secondaries, in the rear metering block you'll find jets installed and in some cases a secondary power valve as well. Back here is where you'll notice the additional accelerator pump at the bottom of the rear bowl of this double pumper carburetor. Now let's go over to the passenger side of the carburetor. With these models of carbs, the rear throttle plates are tied directly to the primary throttle lever with a connecting link. 
This means that you're manually controlling the opening and closing of the primary and secondary plates inside the body as you operate the throttle lever of a mechanical secondary carburetor. The final component to review is the choke assembly. With a manual setup, you need to hook up a cable that's going to control the position of the choke plate that we saw earlier on the choke horn of the body. With an electric choke setup, the position of the choke plate is controlled automatically when the engine is started and then returns by itself to its closed position when the engine's off. That'll cover most of the details for a Holley 4150 mechanical secondary carburetor. Let's move on.